Hi, this is Dr. John Marenfar, and I'm going to show you how to plan a dentalist case using DTX Implant Studio. So after the files have been imported in, what I like to do is just look at the volume and look at the three-dimensional rendering that's been done and look to see if there's any artifacts. If there are any artifacts, I can simply go on my patient mask and remove artifacts as needed. Now, in this case, it's really clean, so there's not much artifact that I have to reduce, but it's simply done, and the software allows me to do, do that. If there was any larger artifacts that were in space, I can simply uh, press the keep largest part, and it would clean the files for me. Once that is done, in this case, the digitalist case, I'd like to locate my nerve. And Pretty much you can just follow the screen, and in this case, I'm gonna go under Diagnostics, Nerve, and you can see now a two-dimensional panel. This can be adjusted by going through the slices, and if the inferior alveolar nerve is not visible clearly, I can adjust my nerve slices. Simply remove these markers or add new markers or just by moving them side by side. Now, this patient clearly shows a very nice visible canal. So in this case, it's easy for me to uh, locate it. I can move through the slices. I can adjust my panel and have a clear view of the diagram. Now, we're just going to show you simple diagnostic tools here. Now for the nerve, I typically start with the left side. And once I find my canal, I can uh, go ahead and start recording the nerve. And I can either slice, put my slices through the panel, or I can go through slowly in three of these images and pick my markers. So either way, it gives you what you need. Once that is done, I can either double click or press enter and that nerve is not complete. Now I can do the right side by moving a cursor and add new nerve. Now the software has a lot more functions, which I'm not showing today, but we can just simplify things by just having the nerve diagram shown here. So here I can see my right side, I don't see my left side, so I would just go back to diagnosis again, and I can clearly see it here. And I go back, and here we can see it, blue line where the nerve is. I'm very happy with this. The nice thing about this software is we can, there's different keys for functions and I can move the jaw side to side. I can use shortcut keys by just simply pressing number five, it will center it for me. I can look at it from the occlusal view. I can look at it from lateral views. So it makes it really easy. It's a very friendly to, to work with. Once this is done, now in this case, I'm planning for a lower all on four, and this is we're doing freehand. So we're not, this is not a dual scan uh, technique. We're not fabricating a guide. We're just simply going to plan our implants. And by doing so, we can go to our plan button, implant, and we can find a spot where I want to put my first implant. Now for an all on four type of procedure, what I'll do is I'll find where my nerve slice is, and I'll come anterior and I may take my slice, click on the slice. Once you click on the slice, I can use my arrow keys and just simply tilt the planes. Once the plane is tilted, I can say, say around 30 degrees, I can go on my mesodistal tilting and I can say, well, I can, I like to be around 30 degrees or 35 degrees. And this can simply be done by pressing that button. Once that's done, click back on the screen again. I can rotate the mandible. I can clearly see where my nerve is. So this is a slice I'd like to put my implant in. 
And at this time, I can go back into my implant and pick a spot where I like to place my implant in and brings up the library, which is fantastic. It's a very clean setup. It shows me, shows you all the products that Nobel has to offer. Uh, in, in this case, we're, we're using Nobel Parallel with the Conca connection. So once that's chosen, I can also go through the platforms. And in this case, we're going to utilize a, a 4.3 platform, and the length uh, will utilize a 13. Also, you can see here, fully guided. In this case, we're not doing a fully guided. We can go through a button selection, and we are going to be using most likely a 30 degree multi-unit plus abutment. And we can also pick what height. In this case, we're going to use three and a half millimeter height, and also a coping and a tooth number. So here you have your implant. I can move it, and it shows here on this screen where that implant is. Now, as far as my abutment, if I want to have this cylinder come through the puzzle plane, I can go through rotation and move this to where I think it's proper for ideal surgery and ideal prosthetic design. Once this is done, I can then apply this and do the other implants. So here, by changing my views, I can see now the cylinder is coming through the occlusal surface. And again, the nice thing is you can simply move the structure around and magnify, rotate, and I'm very happy with this placement. If I want to make some modification to my implant placement, now keep in mind this is going to be freehand surgery, but I can see here where my mental canal is, I can make some modifications and I can move the, as I move, it shows me where everything is. Needed to be, we can duplicate this implant by, by clicking on the implant again and parallel implant. In this case, we're not, we're just going to add another implant on the lower left side. Typically with these cases, I like to plan my posterior cases first and then I'll move to the anterior. So by again pressing the implant button, it allows you to put the implant in. Now, in this case, what we'll do is we can go here to as far as set focus. The nice thing with this function is once I click that, I can find the slice where I want to put my implant and automatically puts that slice. Now, we need to correct our plane. And by using my arrow buttons, I can find a plane where I'd like to place my implant on the lower left. Go to our plan button, implant, same thing. One click and one click at the apex and it will pick, already it's kind of picking for us what implant as far as the dimensions, we're just gonna shorten it to a 13. Now we can go ahead and change tooth positioning by using this diagram. Here in this case, we're not doing fully guided we're going to be freehanding and we're going to use again another 30 degree abutment for three and a half millimeter collar with a coping and voila we have our implant now we can make some modifications we can make some adjustments i can click on this screen and make some changes or i can use just the on the left screen and they're all active screens, so we can make a modification changes. Again, change the rotation. So we have our multi-unit being rotated and bringing the coping to a level where it's favorable. Now you can see the angulation is off. I can either correct that with the implant, but then you can see in this screen, we're coming a little bit towards the facial or we can continue our uh, rotation to get the desired 
outcome. Another option I have here is I can come to the, this function here, and now it's more anterior posterior positioning, and I can increase my angle to give a desired outcome. So here now I have better outcome as far as placement. Then I look at my AP spread to see do I have enough room to possibly move this implant posterior, and I do, so I can do that. For the anteriors, a little bit more simpler. What I like to do is look at it at the occlusal view and just simply find a spot that I like, going back on set focus. Pick a site that I like is typically distal to the laterals or anterior to the cuspids. Once I find my slice, I will go ahead and upright the slice. And you can you know you're uprighted by clicking the meso distal tilting. So here I'm minus one, I was close. Zero, and I can go ahead and plan, implant, pick my two points, pick the implant, four, three by 13. It's not gonna be guided. We can turn that off freehand. Stand abutment for this most likely use at 17 degrees. Two and a half, coping, yes please. Select product. Now here, we can go through the same thing and go through rotation and make it so this is coming to the desired position to support anterior teeth. Now if this is too much, we can again make some modification with our implant or just simply move this to where we need to be. By doing so. Now, after this is done, it becomes a little bit simpler. I can simply click on the implant. Once this implant is highlighted and activated, I can put parallel implant. I can pick a site that I want and then the software will just automatically do that for me. So I'll press set focus, the site that I like. Once the site's picked, it shows me the site. I can click on this implant and I'll just say parallel implant. And I pick my position and it will drop the implant in. Makes it much easier for this purpose. And this is really how I plan a lower mandible, uh, non-guided, all-on-four surgery. Thank you.